Hey, we're recording, aren't we? We are. Oh my God. I didn't realize I was live. I should put my pants on. Hold on one moment. <laughs> zip, 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 pull, pull, zip, zip. Hey, when did these pants stop fitting me? March. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are you ready to do some goddamn podcasting? Goddamn Friday, podcasting. Let's do it. This is, uh, this is our Labor Day podcast. I absolutely love you. I absolutely love you too. All right. Let's do this. And and I want the stuff that we just talked about in the goddamn podcast. You got it. Or I'm just going to sit here very quietly and say nothing for the next hour. Yeah, right. Hey, you know what you can do? You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcast, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to the podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for September 4th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we plan to vote only once and get everybody else to do the same. It's the professional left with Drip Glass and Blue Gal. <music> Hear that, everyone? You need to vote. Got it? Do we need to repeat it? You got to get out there and vote and take people with you to vote and get your friends registered to vote and check to make sure that you are registered because there's a lot of fuckery going on. And there sure is. So you got to really, really be thorough about this stuff. You got to be it's like you're planning a vacation during a pandemic. Mm -hmm. except, and, and that's really what you're doing. You're planning a little outing on a day when things might go horribly wrong. So you have to have a plan, backup plan and a backup plan for that. You're all very good at that, I'm sure, when it comes to planning a vacation or going to the store, some of the things that you now have to take very seriously. Just apply the same reasoning to voting and get a couple more people to do the same. And we'll crush these sons of bitches in November. That's right. Shall we just – shall we go to the conclusion now? Because i got nothing else to say for this well, week. Well, you is know what? I it, It's interesting to me that David Pluff was on uh, All In this week talking about how uh, a large swath of voters has tuned out Donald Trump. Yes, even if they're planning on voting for him, he's just too embarrassing. Yes. And, and you know, you and I talked before the podcast about, <laughs> my God, <laughs> Ezra Klein can't believe that the there is this 36, 38 percent floor under which Donald Trump never drops. That because they're, they're just gone. Well, and shall we go into that right, right now? Yeah, let's go into that right um, now, because I think that's related to the ability to tune out Donald Trump and whether we should tune out Donald Trump mm -hmm. and what we do instead of, of being absorbed into the Trump world nonsense. Yeah. Uh, I think Joe Biden handled it very well today in his press conference. This is Friday, by the way. We're recording this, this is on Friday. Friday. We are recording on Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, talk about Ezra Klein for just a minute and what we had talked about earlier. Well, it, it's Ezra Klein really wants to be David Brooks. Oh, he wants to. He wants nice. to. I know he wants to sort of <laughs> hover above the common mass of humanity while still technically being uh, a liberal, and and remark about sort of the general status of the species on Earth, uh, which is fine. He has a lot of a lot of money, and he has a lot of. That's uh, a good living, actually. Living. Apparently, according wow. it's you know it's 160 words just, a week and yeah. or 1600 words a week, and you're done, right? Just, just keep farting into that little <laughs> bag, that's yeah. keep you aloft, and you'll be fine. Um, but you know, Ezra Klein just has these weird, it's like this weird sine wave. He and Chris Hayes do this on the people. They have this weird sine wave in their reporting where they can one minute seem to actually understand how bad things are and how bad things have always been and why they're not going to get any better anytime soon and how thoroughly fucked we are. In my notes, I have Ezra Klein and xenogenesis, which is a wonderful word that isn't used very much. Xenogenesis just means giving birth to something that is alien to you. Mm. That's completely alien. And the fact of the matter is that our democracy has given birth to something that wants to kill democracy. Mm -hmm. And it has been a, a it's been going through labor on the right to create this monster for decades. And the people who've been saying, oh, shit, oh, shit, here it comes. You got to stop to stop feeding it, stop nurturing it, stop giving it red meat, have all been ignored and all been told to sit down and shut up and all and up to and including Hillary Clinton. Who in the 2016 election pointed out that a not all, but a non-trivial number of Republican voters are deplorable people. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, and that killed her in the media. That was an extinction level event for Hillary Clinton in the same media that is now 
every hour going, holy shit, can you believe how fucked up the Republican Party is? Mm-hmm. And there's no and they're deplorable and using yeah. the word deplorable over and over and over again. Yeah. Yes. And there's no crossover. Yes. There's no crossover between there's no acknowledgement that there was a before time when you all said exactly the opposite. Mm-hmm. So Ezra Klein is shocked that Donald Trump's numbers aren't getting sub- substantially lower. Mm-hmm. Like dropping into the teens and twenties, right? They're staying, which is the, where, where in a sane world they would be. Right. Yes, and yes. the only way that his numbers would drop uh, ten points mm-hmm. is if ten million Republicans suddenly dropped dead. Yeah, because they're yeah. all shitty, awful, racist assholes, and they have been. Well, trained. and they're also all brainwashed. Yeah, right. you're about to go into that. Yeah, right. they're, they've all spent. A long time, and the Republican Party has spent a lot of effort and a lot of energy engineering their brains so that they're basically that little nodding bird thing at the barbershop. Mm-hmm. They just nod mm-hmm. at whatever Donald Trump says. They don't really care whether it's true or not. They have two parts of their brain that are active. One part is Donald Trump's fucking amazing. He's the second coming. He's great. And the other part of their brain, when that first part collapses, because every lie Trump tells eventually collapses, the second part of their brain is, well, it doesn't really matter because liberals are worse. And liberals are always worse. No matter what Donald Trump does, some liberal out there is worse than that. The liberal mobs are just as bad. The liberal tendencies are just as bad. If you elect Joe Biden, you're going to have a communist revolution in a minute. And Donald Trump is sort of the rough character we need to bring them, the lefties, under control. Now, those two parts of the brain are directly in conflict with each other. Mm -hmm. One is, Mm -hmm. this is not happening. (laughs) What you are saying is Flatly untrue. Donald Trump would never, ever, ever do do X. And the other half of their brain is, oh, even if it did happen, it Mm -hmm. doesn't matter because uh, the liberals are worse. And no, you can either have one or the other in a normal, functioning, healthy human brain. But we have a bunch of AB normal brains out there who don't think like normal people. They simply – they go through their life – sucking down the shit that comes out of, of Rush Limbaugh's mouth and Sean Hanley's mouth and Donald Trump's mouth and believing every word of it. And when it goes did bad- Did you just slip in a young Frankenstein reference there? I did. There? I, did. Oh, I just slipped okay. it in. You know. Just slipped it in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want you to listen very carefully. That AB <laughs> brain, though, I think is a, is calls out the lie as yeah. far as the Ezra Kleins and David Brooks' yeah. of the world are concerned because you look at how Newt Gingrich started with his go pack tapes. Go pack. Uh, quarter and, of a century ago. Quarter of a century. Yeah, ago. this this was ninety four. Yeah, and this is a, literally a quarter of a century ago. And how t- he he knew how to train a group of legislators on how to use language to demonize their opponents. Right. When you go in front of a microphone, Democrats are anti family. Democrats are pro terrorist. Democrats are anti military. Very mm-hmm. anti military. Mm-hmm. And you will go on and on and on. And so that part of the brain that's here's demon rats or Democrat Party or w- whatever Rush Limbaugh says is the insult of the day. Has drilled into their skulls. Has drilled yeah. into their skulls. You're in denial about that. If you're like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that that Republican voters hate the D- Democratic Party so much. You really haven't been paying attention. Well, that, that's the problem. To politics for 25 yeah. years, and, right? And when, when paying attention to politics is is literally your, your job. job. <laughs> and, and, yes. and, you're, and you write a whole column about, I, I just, I knew it was bad. But oh my mm-hmm. God, it, mm-hmm. it is almost as if there is literally nothing Donald Trump could do that would lower his approval rating beyond, b- b- below 38 or 42 or whatever it is mm-hmm. on, every, on mm-hmm. any day, on every day. And I'm and, like, but then you have a very sophisticated operation at Fox News, yes, which takes a word. I, we've talked about this before, but it's good to repeat it, and because we're going to see a lot of it in the next sixty days. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw it with Nancy Pelosi's hair this week. Mm-hmm. Nancy Pelosi's hair was mentioned in the past three days, hundreds of times on Fox News. Yes, yes. And in in three digits, hundreds mm-hmm. of times. They did not mention on Fox and Friends the day after Donald Trump gave an interview to Laura Ingram that was the Dark Shadows interview. Yeah, that was disastrous. You know, that By was any a, standards, that person should have been institutionalized. He keeps opening his mouth. Yes. yes. I mean, really, he keeps opening his mouth. And that's and she keeps the, begging him come, to please stop <laughs> saying crazy shit, Uncle Liberty. Right. Please, please stop it. Please, please. You know, you know the liberal media is going to misinterpret what you say when you say that. 
you know, shooting shooting someone in the back seven times is just as bad as making a golf putt. You it, know, the it, it's media freezing up like you made a three putt, three foot golf putt and yeah. you missed it and you froze up. Yeah. And so, and, you know, that's all that happened. Right. And the liberal media is going to misinterpret the literal words you just said that, that came you out of your mouth. That you just said that you <laughs> might not care about pe- black people getting shot in the back. Yeah. Right. And so. But though, th- that kind of brainwashing that Fox News has done, which is to take a word that is not used in everyday language is a little bit exotic. Solyndra. Yes. Uranium One. Soros. Benghazi. Their favorite, Soros. Benghazi. Soros. Sydney Blumenthal. Soros. Antifa. Uh, Antifa. Exactly. Those words are to program mm-hmm. a hate response in the brains of people who have been plugged into this for decades. Yes. And, and plug themselves in. Let's be very and clear. Con- plug themselves in a it is a conscious thing Yes. of, you know, cylindra, cylindra, cylindra. That word is going to, it's just like Pavlov's dog. It's going yeah. to make you hate Hillary Clinton. It's going to make you hate Democrats. Right. You're going to think immediately Democrats are corrupt. You're going to think they're anti-family. You're going to think what, you know, Benghazi. This idea that Benghazi is trending today mm-hmm. is not only a testimony to, a testament to Russian bots on Twitter. Mm-hmm. It's also... An indication of the depth of the brainwashing. And if you are an observer of politics and media in the year of our Lord 2020, and that is a surprise to you. Yes. Uh, you need to go back to school. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that, that's the thing. It, it, it is a, uh, the people who, that Ezra Klein is now and aspire to be mm-hmm. hover above the world and observe humanity as a distant thing that is those people doing that stuff and yeah. well and if you ride the acela train every day or yeah. three times a week it it can feel that way i'm sure you and, know and the idea that he is now f- flabbergasted that the republican party is exactly as bad as we dirty hippies have been saying it is for decades even as he has been sort of agreeing sort of saying okay but it, it that there was always that rising voice cavuto question mark at the end of it. Like they certainly seem like they're pretty bad. They certainly seem like they're, but it it it's this horror of recognizing that things really are as bad. I mean, the doctor holding up the X-ray saying, "Nope, it's going to kill you." I want to talk a little bit about uh, the future. Sure. And the immediate the future, effort, like in the, the next the three effort, days? Or? The effort, no, the effort that uh, the media, as we've been talking about it, and I think mm-hmm. this is part of Ezra Klein's problem and some others, mm-hmm. uh, the effort that the media is going to make, the mainstream media is going to make to allow Republicans, and I say that in a very general way, mm-hmm. Republicans to save face. Oh, yes. Um, friends of. Friends, friends. of. <laughs> Are you a friend of Joe Scarborough? <laughs> oh, you get, sure, come on in. Uh-huh. Wipe your feet and uh-huh. don't talk about anything that happened before 2016 and you're in the club. This is the thing. First of all, let me say this. Joe Biden does not control who endorses him. He no. can reject endorsements. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if it is anyone who could possibly fundraise for Republican candidates who endorses him uh, and is not a Klansman and, mm-hmm. and you know, I am. I am unfortunately differentiating between certain Republican office holders and Klansmen. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, there is no upside to Joe Biden rejecting an endorsement from anybody other than the David Duke level of people. Yeah. Uh, if it is a former governor who may have a horrible record on unions, who may you have a Michigan? horrible record. Yes. Mm-hmm. You mean John <laughs> yes, Kasich exactly. as well? Yes. Yes. And and John Kasich and his record on abortion and yeah. and and and. And there are a whole group of Republicans with whom I will not trust them as far as I could throw them. Mm-hmm. I do not trust them after January 20th at all. Nope. Uh, and if they endorse Joe Biden and refuse to raise money for Republican Senate candidates mm-hmm. and Republican House candidates, the fact that Joe Biden doesn't say anything about them, I think you that's just what you have to do. And it's not a question of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. It's no. a question of this person is neutralizing themselves in this election. Mm-hmm. 
and therefore moving on, move on to the next thing. And I am tuning out Trump as much as I can. It's hard to do because of my work with Crooks yeah. and Liars. I have that's, to listen to a certain extent of it. That's our job. Um, but head down, get busy with voter turnout is really what I do to, to maintain my mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, postcards to voters helps me maintain my mental health, helping get people in Florida. That's what we're doing now. Mm hmm people in Florida have to apply for an absentee ballot. So we are sending postcards to registered Democrats in Florida to get them to have the information they need to get an absentee ballot. Mm -hmm. And so this idea of saving face and letting right. them save face up to that extent, I'm okay with. Mm -hmm. When it comes then to after January 20th, they do not get a seat at the table and they do not get to bring their right to work bullshit to my house. <laughs> well, I have thoughts. Yes, please. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I have a brain that's complicated enough or self-contradictory enough that I can understand both sides of this argument. Yes. Okay. Um, one side is that, that Joe Biden is trying to manage um, like Eisenhower tried to manage mm -hmm. a bunch mm -hmm. of very, very egotistical generals with competing political agendas and he's trying to get them all to attack Germany in a particularly coordinated way. And if Montgomery wants this fucking thing, then give it to him. And if, and if the, the missiles are being fired at England, well, we have to go take out the missile sites. And that's going to distract us. And Patton screaming about, fuck you, give me gasoline and I can take Berlin. Get with the program, George. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's not the program. Um, I understand that. I really do. I understand having a big, loud caucus of people who oftentimes hate each other um, trying to accomplish a single goal. I do get that. On the other hand, I have a, a, I have a suspicion based on history that you and I will have no say over who gets a seat at the table. Yeah, yeah. That the people who – I mean, if you – again, I, let me just put it this way. If you and I actually had any clout, if liberals had any clout <laughs> over anything, had we had any say, do you think if you turned on MSNBC in the morning, you'd see a fucking Republican congressman and his wife? Oh, an entire yeah. panel of Republicans. And an entire panel Come of on. Republicans who are all basically taking liberal shit from 2004 and ripping us off and pretending we don't exist. Yeah. That would not happen. Chuck Todd would not have a job. The entire op-ed – page of the New York Times, minus one or two would be fired tomorrow. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we have no say over anything. Nobody listens to us. Well, that's not true. They listened to us 10 years ago <laughs> later to <laughs> steal what we said and then give us <laughs> yeah. no credit for saying it and, and go right on hating us. Go right on hating us. That's Mr. David Brooks of the New York Times had a column that you know we are now in the shadow of the apocalypse, right? Hmm. It is right at our doorstep where, you know, that we're 60 days away from, from saving democracy or having an authoritarian dictatorship imposed on this country and democracy dying. Mm -hmm. David Brooks is writing a column about how both sides on the left and right are doing terrible things. Uh, They're all taken to the streets, Driftglass. Well, yeah, there, there's, there's the, uh, the, the, the people on the right, Republican and Republican leading independents who are arming themselves. A time will come when patriotic Americans have to take the law into their own hands, those people. And the left is in the street too, blue gal. On uh -huh. the fringe left, there's those who want to overthrow the racist, cisgender, patriarchal, neoliberal oligarchy. That Because those are all the things do, he, uh, the David Brooks hates. He hates anyone identifying anything other than privileged white male pricks like David Brooks. And so those are the two sides that are going to be fighting in the streets uh, come November. There'll be an open war in the streets between those two sides who are equally bad, equally terrible, equally awful, equally wrong, according to David fucking Brooks, who has a job for life for the New York Times. However, we will be saved by David Brooks. And he can't name who they are exactly or how many of them there are, but he's he says new forces will loom into view. And they will be a certain sort of conservative who's been cowering from the Trump onslaught and certain sorts of moderates and liberals who've also been keeping their heads down so they won't get bitten off by the woke mob. <laughs> the woke mob? The woke mob, yes. As you oh, know, no. be, being insufficiently <laughs> liberal gets you, gets you terrorized by the woke mob here in Springfield, Not Illinois. The woke mob. Oh, and those two God. groups will unite in a mighty centrist uprising. Of course. He, there's by, always that mighty centrist uprising right around the corner. And I just, 
I wrote about this and I at a sat. But he down wrote about this ten years, twenty years, thirty every, years. Ago. He's written this six, comes up every time the Republicans every, shit the bed. Every six months. Every six months it's it, it, well, right around the corner. The fringe left and the crazy right are the real enemies and, and there's and and it doesn't really matter if the GOP is screwed up because it, whatever's wrong is just minor glitches or bugs. Well, that doesn't what matter. he doesn't admit – the other thing he doesn't admit is if, if mm-hmm. there were ever to be a grand center arising from the ashes of Anything, both yeah. sides' nonsense he's spewing, mm-hmm. it would be led by Hillary Clinton. Yes. Well – And he, he doesn't want to <laughs> – Never. I don't know about I don't know about what Rush Limbaugh says. I just don't know. You yeah. might recall the last time the governing wing of the Republican Party swung into action to <laughs> to sweep Donald Trump and Ted Cruz aside and yeah. rocket Marco Rubio to power. That oh, was David yeah. Brooks. It was going to be Rubio. It's going to be, be Rubio. Rubio. So David Brooks is a shithead who's never been right about anything ever. <laughs> Ever. I wish you wouldn't sugarcoat it, Drift Glass. Ever he is com- <laughs> he is he is the worst person in the country because Donald Trump is what he is. David Brooks is smart enough to know that he's been a lying shitbag for years. He's mm-hmm. been and and if you ever read, don't read the column, please. Proviso, little <laughs> asterisk. Do not read his column. But if you were dumb enough to read it or read my post, which is I do say so myself, pretty good, you will notice that the the language he used to describe the the bitter, angry cis blah 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 is in tone and intention. Exactly the same language he used to describe anti-war protesters back when oh, he yeah. was oh, busy, absolutely. when he was sitting on George W. Bush's lap and he was yep. Bill Crystal's favorite stooge over at the Weekly Standard. And why they do just, we have bigger tax cuts for billionaires? Yeah. The economy is going to be fine forever. But yes, here's, here's yes. the danger in that. To do all the things I said, you have to remember events from the before time. Yes. And remembering events from the four time before time is, now against a, the rules. is a thought crime and it's against the rules. <laughs> remembering shit is why liberals are not allowed to sit. They're not inv- on, invited to the table because yes. they bring receipts. We yes. talk about this shit as if it actually mattered because you know what? It actually matters. So I under, I am sympathetic with Joe Biden trying to form a big, loud, mm-hmm. uh, uh, contentious caucus of people, a, a coalition that will get him across the goal line. I mm-hmm. get that. But I, I have no faith at all that that come whatever happens in January, the people who will be sitting at the table defining the national agenda will be all the Lincoln lads and all the people on the right and, and David mm-hmm. Brooks and David Frum who all say, yep, thank, you're welcome, America. You're welcome. We saved America. You are welcome. We saved it from the crazies on the left and the crazies on the right. You're welcome. And that well, be- uh, there's one thing that might uh, shit in their punch bowl, Drift Glass. And that's whoever is elected to the House of Representatives. Yeah, there is that, isn't it? <laughs> I do hope the, so. The women that are running for the House this year mm-hmm. are not taking prisoners. No. And are not interested in a whole lot of compromise with the David Brookses and the Lincoln Lads. Hey, speaking, so, of, speaking of taking prisoners, let's talk about Rand Paul for a second, shall we? I want to talk about Rand Paul, Mark Meadows, and David Clark. Well, go ahead. I'm going to sit back and you just rip, <laughs> rip them, rip them, blue gal. Rip go and read. Him. Rip and go read. Him. I'm going to rip and read these three real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rand Paul said the FBI needs to investigate, but the only way that you can do it is if you have to arrest people. Right. Arrest them first. Um, investigate arrest them, later. them first. Investigate later because Ayn Rand said so, and I'm a libertarian. I have apparently completely never understood libertarianism because I've gotten that entirely <laughs> it, It's all backwards. about rounding people up and not yeah. letting them have their freedom until right. they prove themselves innocent. Right. That's, that's libertarianism. <laughs> so I, I apologize. And, I got uh, it wrong. Chief Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, you remember him? I do. Trump's vividly. chief of staff was asked about removing. Uh, Monuments of slave owners. He, of course, guess which network he was on, Drift Glass. Oh, I got to say C SPAN or NPR, <laughs> no, right? NPR. Nope, he was on NPR with nope, Rick Perlstein. Nope. No, no. Okay. <laughs> he was asked by some Fox and Friends people about uh, removing uh, the monuments to slave owners in Washington, D.C. And he said, you know, we ought to remove, we ought to remove protesters from Washington, D.C. Yeah. He didn't say rioters. He didn't say murderers. He no. didn't say violent people. He said protesters. Yeah. A whole lot of people reminded him the March on Washington that we're commemorating this week was protesters. Shh, shh. Shut before, up. You're yeah. remembering the past the again, Fran. Time. Don't, God the damn time. it. That's the before time. You're not allowed <laughs> to do that anymore. And David Clark uh, went one step further and advised his radio listeners on how to get away with killing protesters. Uh-huh. 
He told his Wisconsin audience to have a plan to legally justify shootings. Make sure you have a plan. Vigilante violence, you don't need permission from the police if you have a plan to legally justify why you shot a person. Uh, wasn't this guy, this fake asshole, lawn jockey human being, mm -hmm. um, going to be the head of the Homeland Security? He was going to be all kinds of things until yeah. they got did a background check on him. Yeah. And, and holy shit, this guy's nuts. Yeah, I he's mean, he's got to go. How nuts is he? He's nuts enough to have to sit in the third row of a yeah, Trump he can't, convention. He can't be in the Trump White House. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I mean, Jared hey, can, but hey, you know. Can I have Herman Cain's seat now? No. You yeah, can't have really. Herman Cain's seat now. Uh, no, because he's still tweeting. Yeah. How Republicans run when Trump keeps shitting on the trail. He is literally, you know, verbally shitting on the campaign trail all day long. And yeah. I, it almost, almost, and I mean almost, makes mm -hmm. me feel sorry for his campaign officials. Oh, no. Except I they know. signed up for this. Yeah. Again. And they should have known what they were getting into. And so this idea of somebody tried. I will say this about the Republican convention. Somebody tried to have long, young black Republican activists on the stage. Uh -huh. Somebody tried. Yep. They made an effort to try to make it look a little bit less like a Klan rally. I guess Alan Keyes was busy, but... You know. <laughs> they tried, okay? Mm -hmm. And the day after the convention, it's, oh no, we're going to go full on racist bullshit. And so when Donald Trump talks about the plane full of dark ops from Antifa getting on a plane and dr being dropped into a Democrat-run city. Democrat-run city, yes. Hey, wait a minute. Nancy Pelosi's hairdo. Did you hear about Nancy Pelosi's hair? Oh, my God. Also, also t you know, voters, you should vote twice, which is a felony. Which is a felony. Nancy Pelosi's hair. Yeah, and, and this isn't us <laughs> saying you should vote twice. This is the... Uh, president of the United States. The so-called president of the United States. Did you know we're twice. almost at 200,000 deaths from COVID drift class? Hey, you Nancy know, Pelosi's here. Nancy Pelosi's here and, and Kaylee McEnany. Who, who, by the way, did not take questions today. Kaylee not. McEnany didn't take any questions today. Of course not. Uh, I, I, I think she got a hint that, I don't know if you know this, but within the past 35 minutes of our recording drift class, uh -huh. Fox News has confirmed the Atlantic stories. Oh, well, we should talk about that for a minute. Yeah. It was I mean, uh, Vietnam was a stupid war. Anyone who went was a sucker, according to the president, so-called president of the United States. Yeah. Spoken in, in the presence of people who served in the military and whose yeah. son died in the military. And he, he got he got to say that out loud. And I was surprised that certain people didn't punch him in the face right then and there. But, no. Well, you know what? Uh, this what? is there's a quote about um, from Mark Twain about physical courage versus moral courage. Yeah. And yeah. the people, the generals, those those strutting generals mm -hmm. who serve mm -hmm. under under Donald Trump and who listen to him say these horrible treasonous mm -hmm. things and then curled up under his desk and mm -hmm. let let him put their feet up on him and, and use them as props. Mm -hmm. They might have physical courage. I'm sure they do. They have no moral courage. They're moral yeah. cowards. They're all fucking moral cowards. Everyone well, I, I, I do hope we can depend on them if he decides to stay in the White House after the election, after losing. Uh huh. Well, uh, I remember back in the days, it was maybe five or six or 100,000 years ago, when these were the people who were going to keep him on the straight and narrow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, they were, they were there. They were sticking around to make sure he didn't do well. And they did succeed in having him not start World War III. So yeah, that you, thank, you're welcome, America. You're welcome, America. You're welcome, America. Yeah, and I, okay. I do. I just want to say you got to scrape away the frosting every now and then. And remember <laughs> that the reason that Donald Trump is in the White House and the mm -hmm. reason we are going through this horrible, horrible period is because of your Republican friends and your right. Republican neighbors and your Republican relatives and your Republican co-workers who did this to you. This is not beamed in from outside. There's plenty of Russian interference and, and, and James Comey needs to shut up for the rest of his natural life and a bunch and Rod Rosenstein needs to go yep. hide under the same rock out of which he slithered. All of that is true, but, Donald Trump. If he got, doesn't go to jail. If he doesn't go to jail. If he doesn't go to jail. Yeah. But Donald Trump got 63 million votes from your Republican friends and neighbors and business owners, the people in your community who are still going to vote for him. They are the problem. It, it might help your mental health to stop arguing with them because it's a oh, complete yeah. waste of time. Uh, that's why, you know, as you said, the fire hose of news is is long and full of, you know, stinging nettles every day, mm -hmm. <laughs> shooting at your head. And in one sense, it is the responsibility of every um, 
grown up adult American citizen to pay attention to what's happening in their country. Mm -hmm. But on another level, all at this point you really need to know is Republicans are very bad people. And any opportunity you have to inflict electoral damage on them, to take power from them, to take money from them, to take public respect from them, to right. vote them they out of office. They cannot be trusted to hold political power in if, the United States. If they you have an be trusted after your that. name, you need to go. I'm not saying yeah. you need to be exiled to an island because, you know, there's no island big enough. Maybe New York. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking escape from New York might be a nah, nah. <laughs> that wouldn't work. But Electorally, socially, economically, these people need to be excised from our society because they're a disease. They're, they're a cancer. And if they want to stop being that way, that's great. They don't have to agree with me on anything. They have to stop being fascists. <laughs> that's all. Let's, let's, let's uh, interrupt our wailing and moaning with a little bit of good news. Let's do <laughs> let's that. Let's talk about the Biden campaign. It's well, doing not, a very good job. This isn't bad news. I, I want to talk about the Biden campaign. I want to talk about Arnold Schwarzenegger. There's a lot of good stuff to talk yeah. about. Yeah. Well, uh, just on a lighter note, uh, Biden-Harris signs appear in Animal Crossing. <laughs> and I wanted to talk about this because it it sounds silly and it sounds like an unimportant thing, but it really, really isn't. Mm -hmm. It This is a sign that we have a campaign that is working all the angles. Mm -hmm. All the angles. And uh, I remember, and I'm sure you do too, Drift Glass, when mm -hmm. uh, Barack Obama in 2008, during the primaries had a speech at Selma mm -hmm. about his family and yep. his growth as a black politician. And uh, the Obama campaign provided us lowly bloggers with embeddable code so that we could post the video of the speech at our blogs. Now, you have to go to the before time now. Which you again, have to go to the before time in 2007, 2008. Before there when was, there was a YouTube, there was no YouTube. There was no embeddable anything. There was, there was no, no embeddable nothing. code no. anywhere. No, except no. at Crooks and Liars, you could you could watch video. You could you watch could. video at Crooks and Liars for, since two thousand four. But uh, the idea that a campaign would have embeddable code, and I went to get that code and put it up at my blog, and I said, "This isn't going to work." This just is too good to be true. No, it isn't going to work. No. Not going to be able to put it at Blogger. First of all, these these were the years also when Blogger was crashing yeah. all the time. Yeah, Hello Scan 1.0 day, <laughs> boys and girls. Bad old days. Bad, old school bad. bloggers. Yeah. That's what we are. Yeah. Right. And it's not going to work. And I clicked on it and it worked. I was like, oh, my God. <sighs> this is a campaign that is paying attention and is on it mm -hmm. and knows that there are people out there in the hinterland of this country like me who will amplify the campaign's message given half a chance yes. and a little bit of effort and some technical competency mm -hmm. and it was more than technical competency at this point it was wizardry yes but uh the fact that they said no no let's you know we can do this we can make code that at a server and put it up and do this and we have and we have all the really good tech people on our team doing it. So right. let's make this the speech that we send out and let everybody post it to their blogs. And that's that. So so it was nine level chess. It was not just we have the technical pa capacity to put this embeddable code up. We also ha know that the bloggers will amplify it and we know those bloggers will appreciate and, and be alerted to our attention to them. Well, if, can and I add, all of those levels matter. Let, let me add one thing, not just uh -huh. the Obama campaign, but 2007 was the year that yearly Coes became Netroots Nation. Right. And right. it was a big deal. I mean, it having, really was. Yep. Having technologically sophisticated people who could do exactly that, who could actually get on the internet and turn things around really fast, who could, who mm -hmm. could mm -hmm. run, run, run. Even Chris Saliza was impressed back when you know he was in short <laughs> pants. He was there too. But I, I was there. It was in Chicago. I felt obliged to be there. I met with a little contingent of um, news blog of Drift fans. Glass fans, yes. And it was heartwarming and wonderful. Um, but and they brought you a, a tray of Drift Glass. A little, a little trove of actual Drift Glass. And, we, and, I, and I caught their attention by typing on my laptop, fuck the fucking Yankees, in giant capital letters and holding it over my head. I'm like, oh. Oh, there he is. <laughs> you're not what I expected at all. I expected a tiny, angry man with a big shock of hair. And you're tall and kind of, kind of, laconic and you don't 
like you like you don't get, get upset in public very often. Like, Your face doesn't important. turn all red when you yeah. when you talk about things. Yeah. yeah. And and we got along great. But again, this is a, about me, but it's also about 2007. <laughs> it, it, but it's about the recognition of every candidate but one. I don't think Joe mm-hmm. Biden was there, but every other candidate was there. Hillary Clinton showed up. Barack Obama showed up. There were, two, I think, 250 credentialed members of the international national press who were there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It, no, it was a big deal. With yeah. a broad recognition that this is going to be a different kind of campaign, a nimble, sophisticated, multi-platform campaign. And I think that, uh, if I recall correctly, the next night, um, Obama went and spoke to a, like a union gathering at Soldier Field. I think that's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um but it was clear that somebody on the campaign of, of Barack Obama and for, honestly, everyone else, including Bill Richardson, who still owes me five fucking dollars, um, <laughs> um, was smart enough to figure out that this is how you have to play now. And there yeah. are people in the Biden campaign who are doing exactly the same kind of thing, you know, 13 years later on a different, on a different playing field. But it really is as you, exactly what you said, working all the angles, right. every way right. you can find into someone's. Um, uh, home media street, and home, thinking here. yes and so when right. you have see people that have and it's not just oh there are biden harris signs at no. animal crossing it's right. you're playing animal crossing and all of a sudden all of your friends on animal crossing have yes. a biden sign in their game mm-hmm. and and so it's easy to get it's easy to put up at your you know gameplay so that mm-hmm. it's apparent that you see that and it's just like you know, it's like putting one in your virtual front yard. Yeah. It is it is a way of showing support in a place where people are relaxed and can say, Oh, look, oh, there's a okay. Biden sign. Well I better think about voting for I better I gotta get my voter registration. I gotta check that. I gotta do things to make sure I'm voting. And as as people I used to work with, uh, who were salespeople mm-hmm. would emphasize that I forget the number. I think it's tw- somewhere between 12 and 27 touches. Yes. You know, right. You, cold calling a business never works. Cold calling a business three times doesn't work. You have to have 12, 14, 15, 17, 20 touches before the person notices that you are an option from which they can choose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what However, they However, if your friend has tried a product right. that works for them and they say, oh, look, I bought you this. I've, I've actually done this this year. With, there's a product that I use in my home. Mm-hmm. I called my sister about it. I'm not going to advertise products on the air, but I called my sister about it. I said, you have to try this because I'm telling you it worked on my sink, this sink or floor or whatever. It worked. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I know she's going to do it because her sister told her it worked. And, you know, and you have this problem in your house. I This worked. It is a floor polish yeah. and a dessert topping. That's and a I'll dessert say. topping. That's it's it's Wizzo or whatever the yeah. Saturday Night Glimmer Live. Glimmer or Glower or whatever Glim- it is. <laughs> Glimmer. That's a deep cut. But <laughs> Look and, at that shine. <laughs> and, yes. Look at that shine. And, and the thing is, you also have to do everything else correctly. So, yes, for example, right, the, right. the ABCs of politics. Today, what we mentioned already, Joe Biden gave a speech in a press conference, both of which mm-hmm. were excellent. He did a great job. The well, whole- and it was to me, it was the Joe Biden who debated Paul Ryan. Yes. Remember that in 2008? Who laughed him off the stage. Or 2012. 2012. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. yeah. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. You're going to trust on. this guy with your Social Security? Come on, <laughs> man. Come on, yeah. Man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Why aren't all of you putting up the word fraud about yeah. Donald Trump? Yeah. Come on. And, yeah. and and he showed up. He and gave scoffing. a very good speech. Yes. And he took a bunch yeah. of questions and his answers were good. He was light on his feet. Unlike like, Kaylee McEnany, who was very heavy on her feet and yeah. left without uh, taking one question. <laughs> uh, and, and so just one by one, you take away your opponent's talking points Yeah, because they're yep. all betting on a bunch of crazy shit. They're all betting on pulling, you know, to the longest, craziest inside straight in political right. history again. Right. And right. they're betting on this one card flipping and, and that card. Well, you know, uh, Joe Biden's in his basement and he's crazy and he can't talk. Oh, he's not in his basement and he can talk and he actually fields questions, which asshole president. And he's and guy, he's charming and funny. Yeah. And and scoffs at this guy. And and this is the other thing. It's it's the um, attitude that is not, oh, Donald Trump's a threat to him. He's like, come on. Come on. Come on. Me? I'm not that guy. And you that's and and that's that is going to attract. Uh, guy voters, frankly, yeah. 
and also gets people in a mindset that is, come on, we got to kick this guy out. Yeah, come on. Not, not I've got to drag myself over broken glass to the polls, which has been the attitude of many of us. I've got to drag myself, you know, through through a pandemic and over broken glass to get rid of Donald Trump, and maybe I won't succeed. It's like, no, come on. There's more of us than there are of them. Yeah. And Let's the idea go. of you know Let's everyone go. Yeah. Everyone runs against Washington. Everyone. Yes, right. Everyone runs against, which is a disaster because eventually mm-hmm. you just like tr- you train people to hate their own government. Mm-hmm. And because, you know, professional politicians in Washington, D.C., which is the Rodney yeah, Davis right. campaign, you, that's where uh-huh. you live, Rodney, so shut up. But <laughs> Joe Biden, the Biden campaign is doing something really different. They're running as veterans. Yes, right. You know, we right. know where the we've bathrooms been there, are. We've done this, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, I worked in the White House before, and I didn't break anything, you know. I, didn't, <laughs> I, I, I got around fine. I went jogging around. You saw me jogging with Barack Obama. You know, we did some stuff you don't like. We did a bunch of stuff you did like. We did a bunch of stuff that you probably don't even know about, but we worked really hard. We're not fucking crazy, you know, and we did fix things when we were there. And if you think that all presidents are monsters and they're all evil and you have to overthrow the whole system, I can't talk to you. I hope I get your vote and I'll do what I can to help you. But I'm not going to win your vote. But for everyone else who is dumb enough to vote for this racist asshole because it was time to disrupt the system. Maybe or as a joke, because Hillary was going to win. We're not going to have anyone voting for Trump as a joke this time. And this time, despite everything he says, he is the incumbent so-called president. Yes. Um, and and uh, Biden about QAnon was very clever. Too. <laughs> it was. It was. I'm, I'm a supporter of mental health and I urge them to take advantage of the things in the Affordable Care Act while it's still there. Yeah, well, that's like, well, oh, that that blade went in and out. That, oh, mm-hmm. that it will, as they say, unforged in fire. It will kill. It will kill. It will kill. That it blade will, kill. will kill. This blade okay. will cut. <laughs> Um, this blade will cut, yes. And, and But again, the basics like postcards to voters, the thing mm-hmm. you're doing now, which is extremely important not just to get their them out, but for your mental health, for the mental talk health of, of them. Talk women. about the Terminator, Driftglass. Oh, the Terminator, yeah. Uh, Mr. Get to the Chopper is now get <laughs> to the polling place. Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Terminator, has offered to pay for um, all reopening the polls that have been closed in the South of this mm-hmm. country mm-hmm. because he is, he was a Republican. Remember he's a Republican governor of California and he yeah. got in on the sleaziest campaign. You know, they, 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 uh, they screwed over Gray Davis, the, um, uh, the, the Enron people, um, screwed around with the power system right. in California. Brownouts in California. And yeah. remember the, 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 uh, Ken Lay was George W. Bush's number one you know, promoter. And the minute he got caught, he suddenly had a heart attack and he died. So there's a whole lot of Godfather 2 shit going on there that we could talk about some other day. But Arnold Schwarzenegger was a California Republican slash governor. And he is now saying, look, I will foot the bill for opening polling places in the South that you guys are closing if that's what it takes. Because <laughs> I've mm-hmm. got a shitload of money. And I actually, for all of my flaws, I actually believe in voting. I'm an immigrant to this country who believes in democracy. Like, you know what? Okay. I'm on board. I, I, I'm still not going to forgive you for some of the movie mistakes you've made and some of the mistakes you've made in your personal life and a whole bunch of other shit. But you know what? Cool. If you're willing to buy uh, a bunch of polling places open for this election, good on you, Arnold. Good on you. Yeah, I don't know about the technicalities of that, but it was a great offer. Yeah. And uh, on, and who- on that note, I, I want to talk about white football coaches in the South oh, I, for Black gonna, Lives Matter. I was going to repeat what you told me yesterday, which is Stacey Abrams should call him immediately. Oh, absolutely call him up. Yeah. Yes. Say, Arnold, I understand you have money for voting. Is that true? Is that and, true? And, <laughs> and, well, that's, that's true. It's so true. Well, let's get to the chopper and make this thing happen, shall we? Get to the chopper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, golly. Meanwhile, football coaches. Football coaches from the South, from North Carolina and from mm-hmm. Alabama, uh, marching with their players, mm-hmm. uh, demanding that Black Lives Matter and explaining it to people who might listen to them. I know. That, look, this is about uh, fairness. This is about equality. This is about people being treated differently because of the color of their skin. North Carolina, University of North Carolina, Mac Brown. Uh, his speech is all over Facebook and Twitter as well. Go Google him, Mac Brown. And he gives a very simple speech about, I'm not perfect. I am white. 
I don't know how black people experience things, but I know how to listen and I know how to learn. Mm -hmm. And I have been listening and I can tell you from listening to my players and to other people that it is the color of their skin that is making them be treated as less. And that is wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's very uh, smiley about it. I mean, mm -hmm. he's, it's a positive, I'm learning this and I'm telling you, we, we cannot do all lives matter because that's not cutting it. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, if, if anything is going to break through to a Southern white guy and maybe nothing will, but if something's going to, I think the North Carolina the coach of the University of North Carolina football team saying this in very plain spoken, mm -hmm. uh, friendly letters uh, might open some uh, open some ears. One one more thing, I was grateful that our our daughter uh, posted about the Bible. I, I was going to say the same thing. Oh, oh my god! Okay. Yeah. No, no. After you, it, it's it's Matthew. It's the, it's Matthew or Luke, one of the two. Luke, Luke fifteen. Huh. If you are Christian, this is something that Jared Price posted, I guess, to Facebook. Yeah. I can't tell. But middle child picked up and ran with it. But it was the picture. The picture of the post was retweeted. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and shared on Facebook. If you are a Christian and can't hear hashtag Black Lives Matter without feeling the need to respond with a criticism that all lives matter, crack open your Bible and hit up Luke 15. Don't have it handy. Let me summarize. There are 100 sheep, but one goes missing. Jesus leaves the 99 and goes after the one. The 99 say, but what about us? Don't we matter? Of course, the 99 still matter, but they're not the ones in danger. The one is. I'll say it again. Black lives matter. Mm -hmm. And Jesus told, his, told the parable and said, you go after the one. You go after the, the sheep that fell in the ditch. You go after to save the sheep that is in danger. You don't, you leave the 99 and you go and save that one because it matters. That one, that one sheep matters. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, yeah, the fact that the, uh, I'm not going to say little children because they're big children, but, and they're a pain in the ass. Let me just tell you, yep. Yep. <laughs> we're having teen drama this week, but yes, we're, we we're managing through it as adults. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful that she shared that. Uh, yeah. That was lovely to see. Well, that was and a uh, level of, of of sort of compassion and sophistication and yeah. and Bible learning that yeah. uh, that you know that most they have been raised as Christian leftists. I know they have been raised in Sunday school. So. I know this, and for all of you folks out there who are wondering about the the liberal left church, there are tens of millions out there. We just don't have a seven hundred club, right? You know, we don't right. talk about abortion and nothing else forever. And, mm -hmm. and threaten to burn the country down if we don't get our way. That's mm -hmm. not how we do things because that's not how we were taught to do things. But we are not keeping our heads down and we are not hiding and we are not pretending the situation we're in is, is good. It's bad. Mm -hmm. It requires mm -hmm. our action and attention. What do you and we love, we love our atheist listeners so much. We do. <laughs> Thanks for putting up with that, Andy. I'm just going to say that. Mm -hmm. yeah, Andy stands for all atheist listeners to this podcast. Andy yeah. in England. He's a stand-in. And speaking of there is no God... <laughs> You'll love that. <laughs> speaking of speaking of their, their your God doesn't exist because there's no evidence for it. Um, per the CNN style book, lies are now m merely evidence free. Just so evidence you know, free. Evidence free. There's no <laughs> lies anymore. The president just made an evidence free statement. No, it's and this just blows my mind because it is impossible for everyone in the media who does this crazy um, pretzel bending bullshit to desperately avoid calling a lie a lie in public they've mm -hmm. got to know people i mean there, there's got to be someone in their life they, they don't exist entirely within a bubble who after they've you know loosened their tie and gone over to the bar and put their feet up or whatever unless they're entirely in a closed circle of fellow assholes someone in their life is going dude what the fuck is your problem i want to hear from that guy i want to hear from the the, the mark kelly of the bad journalists about what it, what really goes on in the newsroom that compels mm -hmm. these people to bend over backwards to to kick the shit out of liberals when there's no call for it and to give every republican every benefit of the doubt long after they've been they burned through any reasonable um by any reasonable measure any credibility they've ever had that was about 30 years well, ago Jeff Glass I 
I wonder, I mean, here's the deal. You and I have never had any mainstream media legitimacy thrown upon us. True. I think I think if we had, I mean, I'm humble enough to think, it, I'm sure it's a drug. Yes. You know, when you're given a big paycheck to come in and tell the news and you're mm-hmm. bringing with you your credentials from the nation, <laughs> right? you know, from the nation magazine and you're coming in as a, as a staunch liberal to be on television every night for yep. what, it, you know, and, and you're being paid humongous amounts of money for that. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to want to, um, Comprom- you may be willing to compromise to hold on to that platform. I have no idea and, if that's true or not. Probably. But you and I have no idea have if no that's idea. true or not. But, uh, so, but, uh, <laughs> but that's the thing. This is – this is. you've heard this on this podcast a hundred times, I know. Again, I'm trying to be empathetic. There is a – if everyone in a particular – at a particular level in a particular industry are all wrong exactly the same way all the time yes, and they never yes, fucking talk right. about it. They never breach it. They never talk about it. They never say, mm-hmm. because Phil Griffin will fire me and then my kids will have to go to public school. You know, that's – they never talk about it. They but never they never break it. <laughs> what? I think that's implied. I don't well, think they feel implied. that they have to say that. But this is the one industry that is supposed to hold powerful people accountable. Yeah. Plumbers don't have to hold powerful people accountable. Accountants, well, they sort of do, I guess. Nobody else is charged by the first – it takes the First Amendment and wraps themselves in it and say, we are special because we hold the powerful people accountable. What about the people in the industry? Shut up. Don't talk about them. Don't talk about mm-hmm. them. Well, they have billion-dollar companies. They're controlling the national agenda. They're putting people in millions of homes who are lying to them every yeah. day. Yeah. What about yeah. talking about them? Well, we really can't do that. That's little, Unless, of course, they work for Fox. The minute Bill Crystal stopped working for Fox and started working for MSNBC, MSNBC stopped talking about Bill Crystal as if he were a, right. a, a shithead. Yeah, no. And started no, talking about him as a valued too, colleague. Yeah. And yeah. so there's clearly a conspiracy – that's mm-hmm. the definition of a conspiracy to tell a very specific lie to the American people every day, even by your favorite liberal stations. Mm-hmm. And that is should trouble the shit out of you. And again, we're not legitimate media. We're just a couple of people in the cornfield with a microphone or two. Who who is supported by donations. And thank That's you right. very and much for that. Donations and fa- don't forget our fake advertisers, Blue Gal. <laughs> um, the Pentagon has ordered Stars and Stripes to shut down for no good reason. Yeah. And as of September 30th, because they write bad things about Donald Trump. That's well, why. And, and today, apparently, like an hour ago, Donald Trump said, I, that never happened. I never said any such thing. I love Stars and Stripes. I wipe oh. my ass with Stars and Stripes. So I don't. I Because he but, got caught. But yeah, he got caught and he, he walked it back and said it never happened. And okay. that story will disappear just as fast as well, bounties being put on the heads the of the Let's the Pentagon soldiers. realizes that the command, the so-called commander in chief said it's a, it's back. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, not if they use the U.S. mail to, to talk to each other because apparently the <sighs> United States Postal Service has paid $286 million over the past seven years to XPO Logistics, the former employer of who, who, who? The current Postmaster General, Louis DeJoy, who still holds at least $30 million stake in the company, which has ramped up its business with the post office since he took over. Yeah, that's not a conflict of interest. Yes, no, it is. It's just a bribe. Uh, I mean, that's just what it's it is. A bribe. It's not a yeah, conflict um, at all. It's just a bribe. I wanted to say hi to our listener, Stephen. We just finished up the tomatoes from oh, your garden. Yeah, they were so good. Yesterday. They were Thank so you good. very much. Mm-hmm. This is somebody who comes down to Springfield to see us, and mm-hmm. uh, we and have pelt, coffee. And pelt us with tomatoes, but we catch them and in the air. And we use them. Tom- he, said, he, br- he brought down tomatoes from his garden, and we just... The the last two ripened and we had them on salad yesterday and with they were fresh so good. corn from the cornfield that is literally from fresh a, corn with from the cornfield. Let me tell you, Illinois corn. We are living in exactly the right space for Illinois corn. corn. It is. It was so fresh. You bite into this corn, it's just like, oh my gosh, oh, this just came right off the stalk. Anyway, mm-hmm. but Stephen uh, DM'd me today and said, "Hey, blue gal." Do you get to count how many losers and suckers got interviewed on Fox News this year? <laughs> Is that part of your job? Yeah. You our, know how many military people? You know, I'm in the military. That's why I'm for Donald Trump. Yeah. yeah. Our, our abacus doesn't go that high. So Well, and no. Fox confirmed the story today yep. that he, he said Vietnam people were suckers. Vietnam vets were suckers for yeah. going. Yep. Uh, in local news, Drift Glass, oh, tell yeah. me this story because I didn't hear this. You did. I did. There, there's a, a local 
uh, Springfield uh, uh, troublemakers um, mm-hmm. that, that traffic <laughs> in rumors and lies and stuff. And it's not us. We, we're much, much uh, – no, we're not. We're no better than they are. But they traffic in really is explicitly local news, and they caught this guy on video, and it made it up and made it up, and finally it landed on the desk of a prosecutor, and then it made the actual local news, the actual local TV news, a man facing felony charges for attacking an activist. And there's an arrest warrant that's been issued for a man accused of assaulting a Springfield activist and legislative candidate. His name is Dan Richards. He's facing two felony counts of aggra- aggravated battery and two dem- misdemeanor counts of battery. He was allegedly caught, because you got to say allegedly, on video headbutting John Keating during a heated confrontation on a downtown street. Richards reportedly owns two local stands that have been selling, wait for it, Confederate flags and Trump 2020 flags. Keating has Confederate con- flags in Lincoln land. In, in the backyard of Abraham Lincoln's tomb, tomb where he's fucking yes. buried. This asshole's out selling Confederate flags because, hey, you know, money's money and Trump's Trump. And fuck you if you don't like it. Snowflake. And I'm going to have Confederate flag to say it for sale. And that's yeah. And and Keating, the activist, said, you know, free speech. You have the right to sell whatever Trump memorabilia you, you want to. But it's in pretty poor taste to have a Confederate flag. Set for sale in Lincoln's hometown. Yeah. And right? then Richards yeah. went berserk and started screaming at him and headbutted him. And head-butted somebody him. caught it on camera. Oh, so now, womp womp. now he's either going to be fined or he's going to jail. Either way, uh, you know, there, there was a, a moment this last weekend where we were on uh, opposite ends of town. There was a, a small but very effective Black Lives Matter, peaceful, family friendly, mask wearing Black Lives Matter protest uh, slash march at the state capitol. Next to the statue of Lincoln. And I mm-hmm. I saw people I knew their waves as I went by. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Hi. Hey, hey, how you doing? Yep. I was on my way to doing something else. The other end of town in an abandoned restaurant on the corner, there's a sad looking van from fucking Florida selling yeah. Trump Trump flags and Confederate flags and the, the Gadsden flag. And they're just like, you know well, what? I guess you could put those big Trump flags on your boat on Lake Springfield and sure. ride around Try on them, but it wouldn't that. be quite the same. Well, there's no way out of Lake Springfield. You they can't, can... right. I was going to say, it's not like you're, you know, down in Florida <laughs> yeah. going off the, the going out to the beach. Right. Uh, you, right. You, you, there's no, no escape. You, you're going to have to land somewhere and there's going to be someone waiting for you going, man, you're an <laughs> asshole. You're an you're asshole. A real asshole, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Drift Glass. This, is, this podcast has been a tonic for me. I appreciate well, me talking to you. Me really. too. And afterwards, we're going to have an actual tonic, and then we're going to play trivia. So, <laughs> so we're going yeah. to do adult things, fun things for the rest of the day. And we will not be available tomorrow to take your comments or questions because we've got to go do some stuff involving an empty apartment. So. Oh, Lord. Well, no, we can talk about this. Junior dude moved into an off-campus apartment he, uh-huh. as a senior in yeah. college. He has to live off campus this year, and he forgot to ask his landlord whether his apartment was furnished. Guess what? It's not. It's not. <laughs> so so we're loading up the van with some odds and ends, uh-huh. some folding chairs and folding table and a couple other things. He's got a bed now, so yeah. that's good. But, yeah. like, come on. Le- live and learn. This is one of those things that at 21 – yeah. You make that that huge mistake and then it's like, okay. Okay. And he's a 21-year-old guy, so sleeping on the floor for two nights is not no. the worst thing that could happen to you, but you just say it's say it's for the cause, man. Yeah, yeah. We, we yeah, peanut butter sandwiches and sleeping on the floor for for the election cause. Yeah. Right. We we've, we've done that too. Sure. We <laughs> that have. was years ago. But we were 21. It's all yeah. right when you're 21. Anyway. Anyway, we want to say uh love you guys. Hang in there. Keep your heads down. Tune out Trump as much as possible and uh, get as many of your friends and family to vote yeah. out this monster and his entire political party. And catch up on your sleep. Yeah, yeah that's a good thing to do, too. Yeah. We love you. And each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Mazakeen or Mazzy. Mazzy is a gorgeous torty. Uh Mazzy turned one year old on August 24th, and on August 7th, before her birthday, she got the best birthday gift ever. She was adopted into her forever home after being in a rescue facility for most of her life. Isn't that nice? She's a sweetie. They say she's a sweetie, but she still has what they call kitten power Mm -hmm. because she will literally bounce off the walls. Uh, She has made very fast friends with two other cats in her house who are both Internet Kitty of the Week alumni. 
And she does enjoy eating her freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. So please uh, visit Mazikeen or Mazzy at our Facebook page or website. And do enjoy freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write to us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write to us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Go Postal Postal Unions. Unions letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag save the post office. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job and a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. You can do buy me a coffee. You, our postal address is there. Uh, our PayPal button is there. It's all there at proleftpod.com. We want you to have lots of options for how to support the show. And we really appreciate your support. Thank you. Please share our show on social media. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties don't want to hear one more word about Jerry Falwell Jr.'s sex life. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020. DGBG Productions.